back of the van. Right, hello and welcome to the back of the van. We have took a trip round the M25 today to meet the one and only Andy Stevens, Mr. Andy Stevens TV, presenter, personality, is that kind of broadcaster, that kind of show, isn't it? But tradesman at heart, knows what it's very much like on the tools, come through the ranks of being tools, works with a lot of companies actually in that area, haven't you, over the years, different companies yeah. from a trade yeah. point of view. So yeah, it's quite cool actually, it's kind of a different side to I suppose my coming through the, the industry with the, the tier one kind of side of the world and now that. So Andy and myself have had a uh, last couple of years, I suppose we met NEC, didn't we? A couple of years back. Yeah. At UK Construction with. Yeah. yeah. So a um, bit of rugby background each, what's always interesting. A few stories on that side, but Andy joined us today. We're going to have a little chinwag about Andy's background. And so Andy, where did you start? Out of school? Before on, then. Before then. During uh, school. I was, if you wanted anything, go and get a job. Yeah. So yeah. my first job was 12, labouring, and I negotiated up to £2 an hour, which actually was decent that's money, because yeah. that we're talking about 35 years ago. Is it? Yeah. Um, and that was tough. That was proper tough. And then... Big sites or...? No, small stuff. stuff. A bit like yeah. what I'm doing now, residential stuff. Is it, um, yeah. And then I think the most fulfilling job that got me really into it is or was there was a guy that built tree houses for kids camps mm -hmm. in cool. big woods and cool, fields cool, and stuff cool. and i was what was i 14 15 at the time and just watching him just create yeah something from scratch Art. And, it, and it was you know there weren't really power tools as such it was it was just a brilliant thing to learn Hammer and, nails. and then really got beasted in australia Labouring out there. Oh, really? Did you? No, that's cool. What was you out there for? It wasn't cool. It's fucking hot. <laughs> it wasn't just the heat. You were only allowed a break if for a smoker, for a fag. Convenient start smoking. So that's why they sold their fags in boxes of 50. So you got the lowest ones, which from memory were Long Beach, okay. that were like straws. But if you didn't smoke, you weren't really allowed a break kind of thing. Really, yeah. And the, I was, most of my job on this one house was breaking up a concrete path with a wrecking bar. I could barely pick up yeah. in 42 degrees of heat. But by the end of it, I was like the Hulk. Yeah, as I say, fit as a Just, fiddle. And it was great. I really enjoyed it and then did door work and bar work in the evening. To, did you? Yeah. yeah, it was great fun. But then, then I had a little stint out of, not many people know, I had a little stint out of construction because I couldn't get a mortgage. Okay. You know what it's like, labourers' wages, you know. Mm. No so I went into media sales, which not many people know. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I sold the sponsorship for the World Cup for Brilliant. Yahoo um, when it was in Japan. Yes. Um, well, so we're ITV. The Japan South Korea show, didn't it. they? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, and my last job was head of online at the Mirror. Really? Yeah. And then um, didn't get my contract extended after the probationary period, let's say. But the experience of a bit of media. Well, it get, thought, it's uh, helped with what I'm doing now. It does, yeah. I had a failed career sales, a uh, failed career in car sales. I went into for six to ten months. I was told I was too honest about the fact that some lady didn't need to buy a car because she was about eight years old and it had about ten thousand miles on it. I said, "No, you don't need a car. Keep the money for the, for the grandchildren." <laughs> and, uh, it was one of those. So yeah, that was what. And a bit helps, doesn't it? It but, does yeah. help. It, 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 what it helped with is when you start. So when did I started developing? And obviously, with the 0708 crash, I shelved the developing and set up the construction mm. company, extensions, refurbs, yeah. and setting all of those things up. That kind of office environment for not that long, a few years, yeah. gave you the idea of how to cost stuff and, mm. and how to lay it out. You know, um, yeah. so that helped. And yeah, and then won loads of quite a lot of awards for extensions and bathrooms and stuff. And then. Did you always keep in touch with that media side of it? So you're doing the business, but you also realised the media No, side. I shelved that completely because I just I was addicted to being on the tools. Yeah. Evenings, lates, weekends, Easter Mondays, whatever it was. Um, but, hand on heart, the reason it failed is because complex PTSD. Yeah. When there was a, a discussion with a client about extra work, unforeseen, something, couldn't deal with it. It was fight or flight and the brain automatically kind of shied away from it um, 
and you know all the lads always you're not a fucking charity and mm. keep doing all this extra work for nothing and at the time you see a little bit you know say you, you you're doing an extension you, you price up for skimming the walls but you know all the old fucking crap falls off so you've got to float them first not this dotting and dabbing rubbish you just do it to push the job on yeah well actually there's a few hundred quid and it's so easy isn't it because i remember doing it a little bit from groundwork i started block paving and driveways for people and that. i've done a few of my own private jobs shall we say but own jobs but i just got in i suppose it again now think about it, the anxiety side of it and that of i've just got to do that and how do these companies just price this for five days to be in and out and then they suddenly we come across a broken pipe in the ground we've got to repair but there's a reason they have to liaise with the stuff but, but I've given them a price already am I yep. going to take that on the yep. hit or do I discuss it and say to them but none of us are taught how to set up and run a business no and you look at your apprenticeships not that I did one but yeah. you know you look at it you get all the fucking health and safety this that and the other and how to use a ladder for six months yeah. training but how do you put a company together how do you operate um, things like marketing tax VAT social media and that's and before, Subbies. and even just as a self-employed individual, isn't it? You're literally operating as a business from the day you walk out of school, aren't you? Self-employed. Now you got a, you got an accountant. What's an accountant? I still don't put my you get back money aside each yeah, quarter. Yeah, no, no, it's all. It just becomes your cash flow, doesn't it? And then you hope that you just hope for fucking. Got, then yeah, then you get your back bill and you think, oh, shit, where's that coming from? <laughs> yeah, I hope another job comes in, so I've got to pay me back yeah, bill. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And the amount of people I spoke to, there's not many who do. I don't think put that aside and it does because of the, the, the way we are all paid and the way we're all pretty much knocked every now and, yeah. and to chase our money it's your, it's your lifeline isn't it in a way well the big one that hit me was and people need to be careful of this in residential when you get your home insurance renewal they always say do you want legal cover yeah now that covers you for four types of law okay. one of which is disputes so I went into this house a new build and they wanted the back taken out, load of glass, glazing, fancy this, that and the other. Yeah. Drawings and everything came through, which you price from, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start taking stuff apart, you know, typical overspec steals away a ton, you then start seeing mm. it's block and beam floor, not slab. Yes. All the walls are just lashed up. They can't take a load of any description, so you've got to start putting in piers or goalposts or whatever. Stop the job, everything was propped up, new structural engineer came in, to be fair, very good. And I said, look, there's extra work I'm going to need. I didn't ask for a lot. I needed about three or four grand to go and order all the new steels and plant yeah. and everything else. I don't know, I'll pay you off the job. Okay. Ended up going to court and they had a million pound legal cover for their £27 a year legal addition to their home insurance. And I was on my Todd. I was never going to win it. Even though I'd done nothing wrong, it was all in writing contractually and everything else. Nothing defends the construction work, does it? Nothing. And then, no wonder we've got problems with mental health. You've got that, you've got not being paid, you've got your van being nicked, tools going. I've had it a few times recently, and positively, because the way we deal with it and see it, I suppose, face on, that we moved a new house end of September. We had a lot of work to do straight away. We did live in it for four or five weeks. And I had all the tradesmen around who I knew and trust and, and, and got really well with. And I liked it, and they did it. Even a couple of boys said to me, there is just this extra... And, and, they can tell they're a bit stand off it, mate, and it'd be like we have we have a couple of sockets out there. You'll probably know more about it, but sockets for uh, wood behind them, so they had to be pulled out and a proper one put. We had to do that, so like, it's an extra 35, 40 quid, and there's been five or six of them. Is is that all right? And I, I'm like, if that's it is, it is what it is. And that, but but it's that confidence in it. What you got to learn. But also, so we're this so is what used it is, to so customers being twats and not paying yeah. us. And you know, you, and it's that knowing you're going into an argument or think you're going into an argument, isn't it? So bloke, or, or do you just swallow it and go? Mm, I didn't realise it, but you've got to big stand thing up at the yourself, moment, yeah. and this is why quite a few people are going to go pop. Is all these materials doing this yeah. every month? It's ridiculous. Not twice a year or once a year. There's some big companies out there, residentials, that are taking the hit of these price rises. Yeah. And I was like, mate, you can't do that because you know if you've got blocks or timber or plasterboard or insulation shooting up 10, 15, 28 percent, whatever it is, you've got to pass that on. My block paving that we do, the groundwork side of what I do, has doubled since a year yeah. ago. 14, uh, 1,800 quid we were paying, um, for a, it was pretty much 800 quid, 1,800 quid for a lorry load, uh, 32 pallets, and now that's in the free three mark. It's just obscene. But what do you do, go back to the customer? They, their budgets haven't changed, you've got to work with that. You've got to, so we, we, we were pretty much with him, they have a budget, and we have to work with that budget, and now my materials are going up, 
but the client's budget isn't changing, so that money's got to come from somewhere. But it's also harder for them because they can't borrow as much because interest rates. Yeah. So when you get in mortgages or remortgaging or loans, yeah, they can't borrow. As this much. is one as well. You you see in out here. Is you let's come out this far? Well, they they want it. Yeah, they want it here. So every yeah. time I go off that drive, yeah, in that van, which is what, 2011. Years, even though it's only got 49,000 on it and it's been looked yeah. after I've got to pay £12.50 now your tradesmen especially like so the trades doing the residential stuff gone of the days of getting a 500 quid beating up van that being your pride and joy and it so people it starting off that can't afford more or people coming to the end of their career semi-retiring yeah. a plumber doing a day every couple of weeks bit of pocket money yeah he's yeah. had his van for 10 years he's not going to go and spend 30 grand they're, lose, they? they're just going to go aren't they? they're going to yeah. get a job in somewhere else we but so the many, good thing yeah. is, Sutton, which is obviously going to be part of this new ULES area, yep. apparently, it was all over the news, they've not... Opposed they, it, they? yeah. No, they've not issued planning permission to put the cameras up. <laughs> they're not too firm. <laughs> Genius. I think Haringey, don't quote me this one, Haringey or somewhere around Hackney or somewhere, one of the north-east to east kind of area, yeah. has said no, and the local council have said no, we're not having it, Sounds and like there's, 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 uh, they're opposing it Because we moment. didn't have any say in Sadiq Khan and Mayors, just, and we're yeah. not London here. We've got a couple of jobs, we've been on the groundwork side, we're in uh, Ilford, kind of uh, Dagnam area, and we've got an old beaten up transit van, what is absolutely brilliant, it's made up of about 10 different transit vans, it's one of those cra absolute lock doesn't lock properly, so to be honest, we've not taken it into East London anyway, but <laughs> we're like, we've got to get a new van, but it's 15 grand minimum. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. we don't, we're not a massive firm, and we, do we want to commit to that? Or do we just say to this job now, we'll just stick outside the M25? But someone's got to pay for it, isn't they? It, well, I don't think it'll get, actually go ahead, because it's going to affect too many people that... So that's going to lose us a shed load, isn't it? Yeah. CSCS card, again, all that situation. We're hemorrhaging people. <laughs> In an industry, we can't afford to hemorrhage people, don't we, really? We're doing everything, well, everything's going against construction, including is, ourselves, isn't it? despite everybody being busier than they've ever been yeah this is the other thing yeah so the press is saying otherwise yep london southeast southwest north midlands wales scotland everybody i know can't cope with the workload there's a very common theme especially over the last few days that go into but nothing's being reported properly is it no state controlled media you won't get that on the bbc saying you know X percentage of micro and SMEs in construction are reporting busiest times for whatever. It's never going to. But even even the media channels in construction, though, are they? Are they saying it's it's busy? I suppose they keep announcing more and more jobs, don't they? But it depends what figures yeah. they go on. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, you know, a shit, a yeah. boring story. Someone doing well doesn't sell a newspaper. It's tragic. It's then, so sad, isn't it? That. Yeah, and that's why if you look at all the crap on telly over the years cowboy builders and that you know that's what they class as good tv but it's giving all of us a shit name when it's a percentage like that Hammerous. like any industry yeah how many people? i did one i don't know if you know i did one called cowboy trap about 12 14 years ago went and looked at it and bizarrely the guy that presented it replaced me on the radio show gotcha yeah and he said, right, we're going to go, this woman lives on her own, has been left in a whole world of trouble, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Got there, something wasn't right. And I said, first of all, please come and see anything you've got from building control. She is council, not private. So she brought all this paperwork out. And um, anyway, she said, do you want a cup of tea? So we've got a day to shoot, get everything done. Yeah. Oh, that'd be lovely, all the crew had one, he had one. And then, so she brings it out. And then she, in front of us, so she's giving out tea, she next pint of cider. This is gospel, right? So she's pissed. Jeez. And I start looking at things closer. All the paperwork's in place. Final completion certificate, building control. And all these leaks and everything else. There's one on the ceiling beneath the bathroom. I looked at it. I said, I don't know how to say this. She's painted it brown. I'm trying to make it look like a lake. You know, adjusted a few doors. They look like they're falling. Everything. I said, look, the finish isn't great, but it's been passed. Yeah. As you know, building control don't have anything to say over quality. quality. Yeah, it's yeah. meeting guidelines and recs. Mm. So, yeah, that didn't, you know, he's saying you've got to come on camera and say he's a cowboy and look what he's done. But he's yeah. not. He just hasn't finished it that well. Just a man. You know, I didn't say he probably got pissed off with her mm. being drunk all the time. Yeah. Um, we, you know, but you're never going to see 
what you're doing, band of builders. You know, people doing charity work, Honest. free work to raise money for someone that needs it. You won't see a series on that. No. And at the, yeah, our industry is crippled. It cripples itself, doesn't it? It's, I've not read the news or done much with the news or trusted the news. So I think off the back of COVID, really. Since then, I just avoided it, and I don't look at Daily Mail or. BBC, I look on there, maybe a bit of football results or rugby results. I maybe. don't think many people do anymore. No, it's just, and I realise with it, I have such more enjoyable mornings because the first thing I used to do is look at the negative news. I popped in it once actually last week, or two weeks ago, and the first thing that came up was how this manager at McDonald's had harassed and sexually assaulted a member of staff. I thought, do I need to be reading that up no. at six in the morning when I wake up? And now my day has just been started by the, the, the sexual fucking rape case. But you become fucking... involved by it. Didn't you? Yeah, so it my... sucks you in, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, my yeah. my ex missus in Ireland. She was on the west coast, little place. First thing she did when she woke up, telly went on in the bedroom. First thing she did when she got dressed, having a breakfast, watch the news. Mm. Coming from first thing, watch the news. Go to bed, watch the news. And it became not I wouldn't say an obsession, but you know, if they said do this because of COVID or do this because of interest rates or whatever, fucking did it. I heard a, a scenario. It's not true. It's like a whatever you call it. A, my brain's not a clever remember, it's a big word, it's got more than five letters in it. I, um, it's pretty much a man in, in America, his dad, he's got an ice cream van, and he goes to Har his son goes to Harvard, he goes off to Harvard, and his dad's got uh, one ice cream van, he's doing really, really well with it. His son goes to Harvard, comes back, dad, I've looked at the economic side of stuff, it's going to go sour soon. He goes, well, I've just bought six, six new ice cream vans, it's going really, really well. Boy goes back to Harvard, comes back from it, goes, Dad, how's this ice cream van going? I've sold them all up, I'm out of business, I've got nothing. Why is that even? Well, you said there was something coming, so I've just, I've, I've cashed in everything I've got, got my money ready, I'm ready for now. And he's like, No, but you didn't get rid of business. He's like, Oh, but you said, and then he turns out, he's like, His dad would have been fine, just cracking on as he was, if he was, if he wasn't influenced by it. And I think that is, again, is what I try and go by, just move and move and just ignore. You've the got noise, to do what's good for you. And works, yeah. You can't trust Where you are, it's no, different no, for yeah. here or Liverpool or 100%. Cornwall or, yeah. you know, everything. And if you get influenced by everything else, you're not doing yeah. what's and good for you. on that, positive news, as we, I think we both do talk highly. I think yourself and a few of the other guys, we, the A's with, the reason I think what we're doing and the, the, probably the light we've put ourselves at the moment is because we want to see our industry prosper, really, don't we? We want the best things for it and want it to see it, it should do. succeed. It's a great ten, place, ten isn't it? Ten percent of GDP. Yeah, yeah. It's not 0.2 percent with a few people involved. No. You know, who, who went to work apart from key workers during COVID, believe yeah. it or not? You know, it was it was us lot. I was, in a, I was a van with this for 15, 20 people, like this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Signing yeah, into a site all with the same pencil. Yeah, yeah. But it's right because we come in separate vans. <laughs> yeah. But on the yeah. one metre wide scaffolding, you had to go two, so we had to levitate round each other, which yeah. that was fun. That worked for me. I was doing temporary works at the time. I said it's got to be three metres wide. And I was temporary work supervisor. So the job got put. The programme stretched out, a lot more space. The scaffolds are happy. A lot more room. And then I got through a bit more of COVID. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. That's just got to be. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, if you want to work to that, you've got to play with these rules and we'll work to them. Um, yeah. But we've, we haven't got a good industry image. It's such a shame. Isn't it? It's the best. It's the best. I I think, who would have thought you starting off as a ground worker, me scabbing about labouring all those years ago, and we're sitting here in Parliament yesterday, we've been on TV, we've written in the media, we've spoken to all sorts. The opportunities it's given us you know you could go and be a project manager tomorrow you could go and start training to be an architect or, yeah. or you know yeah. whatever and you your, don't get that your destiny's in your own hands isn't it you can run anywhere in this industry with it and we i think we've both proven it really you back yourself and go with it and it's good things happen don't they but you get out of it what you put in if you yeah. just want to go and do a eight till four on a job monday to friday you will only do that yeah but when you want to work for yourself and take the risks the yep. ups and the downs, and as you know, self-employed, the hours are ridiculous. Yeah. Nights, weekends, whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, it's crazy. But it's, seven it's, days a week. <sighs> seven days Every a week. Every day. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. And on that, so yesterday, let's go that one. So this is the interesting part. So we've been saying together, haven't we, recently, about the whole... The statistics just don't make sense in terms of what an honest construction worker does and the way that we are mathematically working out what the statistics are showing, haven't we? So... Thank you for yesterday. That was great. You invited me along to the HBF's mental health and construction little shindig at the Houses House of Commons, isn't it? I think technically known. Parliament. As. The Houses of Parliament. Parliament. Was the House of Parliament. Yeah. So it was in Parliament. Um, what was interesting, wasn't it? And it was again. I was on the call, fortunately, with the Institute of Government and Public Policy on Tuesday, 
we've put out a little message this morning, but we spoke about it yesterday and we spoke about it many times. And obviously, this morning, as I said to you, and the BBC kind of connection, what's happened recently, said to us, Steve, we've had to change the statistic because it's wrong. And for me, and I think yourself, when it was like, this is the BBC at the end of the day, British, who have been told they have to change it by the Office of National Statistics. To me, it was like, someone's listening, you know what I mean? Or they understand that what's being spouted is wrong. And the figures technically aren't as bad as what they're being made out to be. I think we probably all know that they are probably worse yeah. if you really could put your finger on it. But we can't state wrong figures, especially as a charity, I suppose, and, and as someone who's got a reputation as well, yourself, you can't shout wrong figures to profit. <laughs> but as somebody said on a post the other day, I always thought the figures were strange because they never changed. It's always no. been two a day, two a day, two a day, two a day. It's got worse, worse, still two a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you look at the ONS figures, and everyone can jump online and, and see for yourself, it's 507. That's the latest figures, which is only a few weeks, a couple of months old. And as we worked out, just short of 10 a week. Just short of 10 a week. I don't know why you would increase that number to make our industry look worse than it actually is officially hmm. yeah it's bad we know it's bad but that's a big thing to go on record which if you go on the internet you mm. can see people quoting that 700 as, plus 700 plus worked yeah. out on 365 days of the year times two a day but well, we heard it yesterday so we're standing there i was i don't get offended i like to think i don't get offended but some things I find offensive on behalf of the people I feel like I represent, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously wives, there's kids, there's husbands, there's fucking everyone who we know are at home now trying to pay their mortgage because their husband, wife, kids or whatever is dead because they've killed himself. And then certain people stand up and say, there's only one charity in this industry that supports the lives and families of the people within it. And that is based on the two people killing the day. And we're standing there with other charities in the room. Mm. And I just felt that to me was, this is where this industry is. It's it's not, and then the egos are left at the door that's all come together, that support each other. Okay, let's chat. I'm open to it all day long. I've been for the last six years and now I'm probably at a point that, nah, <laughs> I'll tell you what, nah, this is, I think, lying in the sand now. You stand there, we stand there. Things got to be changed. And we, it will change because we're talking just the truth, isn't it? There's no smoke and mirrors. The truth always comes out. Doesn't yeah. matter what you're doing. If it's a, you know, a personal issue, if it's work, if it's charity, whatever it is, it will come out. And I've always said we're not flogging shoes on holidays. This is people's lives. And yeah. as much as you hear, as much as I hear, the stories you hear are brutal. Brutal. Yeah, beyond belief. Yeah. Suicide's bad enough, but somebody there yesterday telling me a story, two of their staff that didn't quite manage it, one with a shotgun, mm. half the face gone. Now, you know, someone's found them. Yeah. Someone's had to deal with that. And I think we need just to, if people are serious, we'll all sit round a table, probably a little bit bigger than this, we'll all sit round a table and actually have a chat, so what's stopping us? Because there's too many egos and people's own personable, right, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to leave my legacy. I was responsible for that. Me, me, me. Well, maybe if you're building a brand or selling a product or service, not trying to stop suicides because that doesn't work. And I, I'm not surprised you were upset yesterday yeah. and other charities there. The reason being is because it's your passion. You want to make a difference. And... It wasn't just what was said, it was in the bloody brochure that we, white, we yeah. were given when we walked in. And also slightly disappointing to hear that the whole mental health awareness thing's been a success. A based, success. Based on a number of mental health first aid courses being sold. Of which is now, not just off my moaning, but you're seeing it, a lot of people are starting to realise it's been ineffective. And I think and there is studies, because I'll tell you what, there's a few links, I'll dig them out on, on LinkedIn, where people sent to me in public, in the public domain, that show it's been ineffective. But what is it? It's a limited company. It's made a lot of money. 
tick box exercise. If MP you can say MPs now pushing it. We see that yesterday. That is not mental health in construction, is it? But the thing is, we could go to this thing, something similar, like you did a couple of days ago, mm. like we did yesterday. We could do that every day. I'm over it decades. so much, then. Yeah. Lip but service. actually, when you look at it, pull all the fluffy bollocks out of the way, taking a selfie with an MP, ticking a box to go on your website, X people are first over there. What's actually happening? Well, clearly not a lot, because the numbers were four, I can't remember the exact number, but it jumped from 400 and something to 507. Yeah, it's a four, four, oh, yeah, four eight, yeah, 468 yeah, or 480 yeah. something. Yeah, four so eight. it's getting worse. Yeah. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's what we're here to do. We want to make a difference. I'm looking at those numbers. Yeah. If they're going up, something's not working. Yeah. And then, Christ, we talk about it all day. You know, HSC, what's your responsibility? Well, we know they don't give a shit. And that's from an experience I've got from being First contacted <laughs> by them yeah. to do a load of broadcasting for them and yeah. what I was told. Um, you know, people infighting for their own personal gain is not how we're going to solve this. And I mean, I was lost yesterday. I thought I knew councils, federations, boards, charities, gov. And suddenly everyone said, oh, I just went and did that or spoke to them. Or well, went and, and you were like, sales, Jesus yeah. Christ. I was talking, wasn't it? And I went, this kind of that. You went, oh, and you said the same with different letters around the other way. Yeah. Another letter in, another. How many people are out there? And everyone is saying, and it is there, everyone's saying, someone just needs to get hold of this and bring it all under one banner. And I think, as we know now, there are so many organisations within different sides of the industry, because the industry is so vast, but there's only one body that oversees all of that, and that's the HSC, isn't it? And that's why I'm so. People say to me, but, yeah, but you've got to change this within it, you've got to change that. It's like, it all comes with the way it's governed, doesn't it, ultimately? I believe. It's not governed. The only reason it's they're not, still yeah, here yeah. is because they're going to turf out a fine for me for having the wrong whatever. Yeah. So that needs to be maybe government backed, not for profit. Yeah. So you're not thinking, okay, we've got these overheads, we need to go and launch a couple of million pound fines out the door. Yeah. So you're going in, you've had a suicide on your job. Shut down, big fine, blah blah blah. I think well, an inquiry. Now we've said an inquiry of some description, and I know it's a personal thing. But if it was if someone who died on site because of a fatal injury, they would still they wouldn't question it, obviously. But something needs to go in. I suppose it comes with backing from the government up top, where they get these five hundred and seven case studies where all people gone, and they are looked into, and they look at the employer, they look at the employee and the situation they're in, and paint the picture of what that worker was dealing with in business and maybe if they can outside if, if within families rights or whatever however it works but don't penalise these companies for it just say that for no. 12 months or 24 months or 36 months we're going to use it as a case study to build and identify what it actually is killing these people but well, we sit day and day out we, we hear we hear the shocking the, the thing that annoys me in it we sit in that room yesterday and like we don't just know these figures what people keep them spouting we know these people we know the stories in depth to the T. And I think it's it's the people that are impacted from that family. Yeah. Your work colleagues yeah. or you know, it's it's so much more than people realise. You know, some of the stuff I've been told about little girls finding their dad in the bath having hacked themselves up and, you know, the bathroom's red. Seven year old girl walked in on that. The story she's not, said, yeah, yeah. She's not gonna unsee that ever. And I mean, that, yeah. having been there Yeah. Waking up in A and E with the ambulance getting to me just in time and then seeing these people lie and try and say they're doing great things and you think you haven't got a fucking clue you've not got a clue because you wouldn't be talking like that 507 families stand in front of you as the person who is responsible for this industry they'd never show up imagine it never show up I why, think... why was there no questions yesterday yeah I've very few things I've been to. I've been to House of Lords. I've been to House of Com Parliament events, exhibitions, TV stuff. People always get the opportunity. The Q and A, little Q and A. At open the end. to the floor. Yeah, open to the floor. Okay, we got X minutes. That's five questions. Whatever, fine. But and I think again, from man, I think yourself as well, probably from the rugby background as well as is quite a good one with that. I always think, and there's a hell of a lot of respect in the game, and I think construction re replicates that. But we get the best results out of sticking stuff on the table, having it out and going again, don't we really? And that happens I think a lot and 
how nice it would be for all these people in the industry who have got this power, or say they've got this power, or have got the funding behind it to go, right, we've all cocked up here, hands up. Let's all just realise we've all fucked this. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Cards on the table, everyone in the room, just let it out. Someone was talking the other day about, um, what rugby club was it? There was a rugby club, I think it might have been Sour Leicester, years ago. And it was going wrong, and they were lost eight or nine games, and they the, they went right lock in in a pub, let them have it, and they put them in there. The boys were beating the shit out of each other, them, getting on the beers, hammering it. They won the next six games, mm. and because they, they let everything out in this thing, oh, I'm not saying to stick us all in the pub, it's quite nice actually, but um, put us in a room where we can all just be open and honest, and the people who genuinely give a shit like ourselves and through the few close people we know, and the powers of be that pretend they say they are or they may actually care. They'd never do it because they'd be shown up to be in it for the wrong reason and having lied for years. It's frustrating as hell. That's it is. why it will never happen. Yeah. It will never happen. Politics. And, you know, when you get it in black and white, because from all the legal training, broadcasting, TV and radio, you know what you can and can't say. And it affects the amount of dinner tables you sell at Christmas. <laughs> It'll affect the cash flow of the, of the organisation, how it's run. We might have I mean, the, the million dollar question, because everyone's going to ask this, is what needs to be done? What would you do? Yeah, what, what would you think? And, and I, don't, I, 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 I don't think it's the right question to ask anybody, because yeah. I think we have an exhibition, we just know something needs to be done. We need to come together and do it. But is there anything you, you personally... Yeah, I've, I was working with a cu couple of government guys, and that went, went quiet for various reasons a few years ago. And what I said was, we, you need... Now, forget all these wanky titles... It's a group of people. Call it a task force. Call it a mm. board, call it whatever. But you need no more than twelve because it gets a bit congested. But somebody from each walk of life in construction. Mm. So you have an apprentice. You have a sixty-three-year-old ground worker. You have a thirty-seven-year-old architect. Different people that have got a good grasp on what they do. Mm. So they therefore see all the different people and how they're affected. Because if you had 12 architects or 12 plasterers, you're never going to get any... So you've got people from, you know, maybe even, you know, some of them from building control, a private firm that's got a national company. So you've all feed in and then you can say, this is what I'm hearing. People probably back it up from the different trades. And you meet and you're responsible for putting stuff in place mm. because you're all connected to the right people at the right level across the whole board from 16 year old apprentice to yeah. you know 75 year old project manager ceo yeah and so everybody's represented mm. and i think that would work and you meet i mean okay who funds it yeah government seem to be printing money for fun so maybe them but somebody funding that not so you're taking a big wage on it, but you're just covering your costs yeah. of meeting up X time, could be monthly, probably mm -hmm. quarterly's not enough, and putting stuff in place. Yeah. And doing trial areas. So if it is something to do with, with a mental health policy or if it is something to do with new health and safety, you, you trial it. Mm -hmm. And people come back and go, that's bollocks. Actually, we got that wrong. Let's sit down and we'll relook at it. But actually get the right people around the right table because at the moment the people at the top making these decisions are the wrong ones. And the results one hundred percent. And the results are showing that. And as I said before, isn't it? If you're any organisation who's not delivering, you are replaced. Oh but here. <laughs> You've you know, you look at it. If your area of responsibility and the targets and achievements is X and you don't do it, it doesn't matter what you Yeah. You're gone. You're replaced. That's in business. This is lives as well. <laughs> if you don't sell well, a certain yeah. number of hammers, yeah. after a while they're going to go, you're way short your target on your bike. We'll get someone else in. But when you sort of think, hang on, we've gone up to 507 suicides. You've been funded to save lives here. And so society, this society will change. You get but, the, but the big thing what is, what, what will never place? change is this old Jolly Boys network of a charity, a organisation, a this, that and the other that's has donations from big companies they're never going to go against each other actually big construction firm big house builder you're doing it wrong you need to put this shit can't say no they're giving us 300 grand a year and vice versa so yeah. that you know when you've Conflict got certain of interest that's why it needs to be centrally funded yeah yep and we're not talking much you know you're talking say 12 of you to meet a couple of times a month or whatever it's not like you're asking for and you might even do it, as, and then every 12 months, that 
that table changes around certain positions. If someone feels like, oh, I've not quite put enough in, or someone recognises, as it is, almost up for election or something like that. Yeah, yeah, well, just, yeah. But come on, we need, to, we need to push more in that way. Do you need help with it? Or, yeah, just be and honest. And from honest, that, you yeah. can form brilliant research, accurate research. Yeah. You can do strong radio, social media, outdoor campaigns, because all those people together understand everything to do with construction. Because you've got someone from every walk of life. And it's, the, it's a blueprint that can't fail. The media side of it as well, again, I've, I've obviously followed you for a while in, in that sense, and that's why I think it's brilliant even having this conversation, really making this open public and putting everything out there. And people don't agree with us, it don't matter. We want to hear it, don't we? So let us have it. You know what I mean? That's the great thing with it. social media. Yeah, if you don't like it, scroll on. Yeah, yeah. But Believe. at the same time, it's. If you open it up to everyone to watch it, you can get everyone's feedback. And you go, Hang on a sec, we didn't think of that, it's a great point there. But when we're making decisions behind a wall that no one knows of, and no, 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 no one even knows who's in that room, and that's casting an impression over our industry and guiding it, it's like, just put this out there, isn't it? I love feedback, positive or negative. It's the only yeah. way, way you're going to improve or grow as a person and a business. Yeah. And no one gets in my but saying, well done, well done, well done. No. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, and I think that's the, again, I think the, the mental health and construction thing is very much, a lot of people are scared of literally saying, oh yeah, that, that's wrong. Everyone's going, okay, 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 let's do that. Let's sell these courses because we're told to sell these courses. Let's because go the people around and do this because. Aren't the right people. Yeah. And that could be government, that could be a charity, that could be a federation, that could be a council, that could be a board, that could be a PLC. I mean, mm. they're so far fetched from you and me digging a fucking hole in minus four in the dark. They drive been knocked, home, drive home been... every night after the job and see those guys at work in the cold and even look at them and go, we represent them. Do you know what's really funny? Um, the last, it was XL, so I don't know what the exhibition it was. I was working at UK Construction Week or, or one of them. Um, at my hotel overlooked a load of work going on by the river, by XL. Hmm. And I thought, what's that fucking noise? Quite late. There must have been... 20 something i don't know 20 25 people working on heavy machinery digging holes whatever with some shit lights up and it was cold mm. and i actually did a little thing on it i said well how many project managers pms fucking site agents whatever have walked up and gone you're right guys you want a cup of tea can i get you a biscuit or anything you need i said not one because and they're so detached from it they don't know you know you come into work you've not been paid the week before half your gear's been nicked your missus has run off with the gardener you know your kids are playing up yeah. all these things going on you don't know what these people are going through mm. and funny enough i've just started working with a big pharmaceutical big global firm and in construction especially you look at you've seen it, i'm sure the amount of trades men and women mm. old and young that go through Problems with mental health, first thing you do, booze. Booze and booze. Next hard. thing you do, weed. Yeah. It's like anything. It's not giving you the hit. Escalate. Class A. Mm. Now I've been there, I've done it. Mm. I told this lady the story. I said, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I've been there, I've done it. I was ripping the arse out of it on weekends when I was going through the divorce. I was homeless, I couldn't see my kids, I had no money, but I found money to go out and just bang shit up and do all sorts. Mm. Because it was masking that pain. Come Monday, Tuesday, when you're on the... Yeah. And that's when you think, well, that was it. That's when I mm. tried it. Yeah. I was fucked. Because it's easy. That's an easy mask. It's hard work to get off your fat ass and go to a gym or go for a walk Drink or learn fruit. meditation or eat healthier, prepare a healthy meal. Don't go and stick a kebab up, you, you know. Yeah. It's... There's simple things we can all do, but yeah. there's too many little people doing it. We need the people at the top, and they're not going to do it because they're the wrong people. Yeah. And we're getting there. We're going to get there. We're shaking We it. will get there. We're, we're speaking in ourselves. We, we, we both know that through our own avenues that something's changing in the wind, and we need it there. But there's plenty more to come from, I believe, the two of us. I reckon and it's going to shake it up a little bit for the best. It's going to happen. Ruffle feathers. It's going to happen. And, and at the end of the day, time. because it's such big reform, big change... There will be a few people, companies, charities, whatever you want to call them, upset along the way. Yeah. But we're doing this to save lives. Sounds dramatic, but that's the reality. It's the, so, <laughs> it couldn't be any more clear than the truth, yeah, could it? Yeah. yeah. And in order to do that, listen, we're 2023, fuck all's happened. We're not yeah. 1961. 
all this nothing's te happened. Technology, innovation, everything we've got. We now need to actually grab whatever it is by the scruff of the neck, and if it means telling some truths, or you yeah. know, I mean, I was discarded from a very well-known federation because I'm classified disabled because I got complex PTSD. Oh, you can't take that senior role. See you later. I mean, how many others are going through that? Yeah. And you think to yourself, stuff needs to come out into the open. We've got to be open, honest, sit down together, bury the hatchet and get it done. Yeah. But as much as there's you, me, others out there doing that, we might have to chip away at the old uh, yeah. dinosaurs or dinosaurs people that are too, at it too cushy too long. Dinosaurs do go extinct. They do. But lovely stuff, Andy Stevens. Good to see you, mate. Good man. Cheers for having us. No problem. It's posh area of London. West oh, shit, I'll be rough as our sort of thing. It's just West London. It's not saying that it's all the other side. <laughs> from the east. We're from the, we get bombed over our way. <laughs> <laughs> right, there is Andy Stevens. Plenty more to come from us. Thank you, Andy. And for a very massive thank you for yesterday. Thank Welcome. you for your support and everything we're doing. So, let's be having you. Back of the van. <laughs>